So you might be thinking, why is this hall voltage so important and hall probe so important that it deserves its own subtopic and also its own experiment in paper 5? Well, I don't know if you noticed this, but let's look at the equation carefully or examine it carefully. I'm going to zoom in a bit, okay? I'm just going to bring this equation and put it here. Okay, so I'm just going to put VH here. And VH just now was BI over net. Right, number one. First observation. Hall voltage is proportional to magnetic flux density. This is used to determine or to measure the magnetic flux density. Okay, and you might be thinking, can measure? I can. Current, we can measure using ammeter. This number of charge carrier per unit volume is the same for the same type of semiconductor. Okay, standard one. Electronic charge, we all know. This thickness can measure, but we can measure on different, different objects that we have. Okay, so setting up this whole voltage allows us to determine the direction of magnetic field. In fact, because it's proportional, which is our favorite relationship, we can even just say, Aya, no need to measure I, N, and T. La, Aya. For the same probe, or the same Hall probe, VH and B, or I guess B and VH does not really matter, will have like this. Correct? So if you have this graph, or based on your Hall voltage, you can always read the value of your magnetic field. So let's say I go and measure magnet 1. So here I can get the reading for magnet 1. I go measure magnet 2. I find the whole voltage because we can measure voltage with large sensitivity using the instruments that we have. We can find the magnetic field strength or magnetic flux density. This VH, we can easy, easily measure. Easy to measure. Okay, because it's easy to measure and we know how to measure, we are using VH to help us measure B. Okay, so that's why it's quite genius. Huh? So we can use a Hall probe. So from here, your inference will be Hall probe is used. Okay, so the second thing about measuring things, right, is that we need the Hall voltage to be of a certain value that is big enough. Okay, so I'm going to draw a line here and write this as number two. Point number two. For VH to be measurable, you can measure it all. You stare at this equation and you tell me, what can you do? You can increase the current, decrease the thickness, or change out your semiconductor such that the number of charge carriers available is less. So, to be measurable, or basically big enough, big enough. There are a few options. Option one, increase current. Change power supply, increase current. Option two, okay, again, forget that, then BH is BI over net. We can increase current, we can decrease thickness, use a thin, thin slice of semiconductor. Option three, we can change the value of N, decrease N. So how do we decrease the number of charge carrier? Make sure your whole probe is cold. So cold temperatures. Because when your whole probe is cold, all the electrons are like, yeah, lazy to move, la. very cold, lazy to move. So the available electrons to move is less. Okay, Or you choose a different material with less number of charge carrier per unit volume. All right. So if you want the VH to be measurable, sometimes it will ask you to provide suggestion to the setup. Okay, So these are all the possible suggestions derived from the equation. So learn to use the equation to help you memorize the points. All right. So we have quite uh, covered quite a lot of ground. We understood 
what is the Hall effect, which is when we allow current and magnetic field to flow through a piece of conductor or semiconductor in the first place, uh, the charge carrier will experience a force causing an electric field to set up until the electric field cancels out the magnetic force. Okay, so the direction of where the negative we go will use, we use the left hand, our beautiful Fleming's left hand. Okay, so based on this, we know that we can derive the relationship between the Hall voltage and the magnetic flux density B. So we've been through derivation before. We carefully substituted equations that we already know from our AS, and I guess this one from primary school. Area is width times height. Okay. So when using this equation, although given in the formula sheet, they don't define the symbols for you. Okay. So make sure that you know what every symbol mean. I like to call it bi over net because I can pronounce the equation that I can pronounce. I can remember. All right. So a few uses of this Hall uh, effect is that we can we use this to invent the Hall probe. Okay. So in the next video, I'll talk more about the Hall probe. But this Hall probe. Uh, this whole voltage is proportional to the magnetic flux density. This allows us to measure or to determine the value of B with relative ease because we can we know that these two are proportional and you will get this graph. Easy to measure your VH. So from your VH, uh, based on our measurement, you can read this way to determine your B. Okay. And if you want very good measurement, you need to make sure that your whole voltage is big enough to decrease percentage uncertainty. So these are suggestions that you can do. You can pass a large current. You can decrease the slice thickness because I'm using uh, this BI over net, no T decrease. Or you decrease the number of charge carrier. Either use a cold temperature or maybe if you use a copper slice or a conductor, replace it with a semiconductor make the electrons as difficult to move as possible. That way, you will need to set up a very strong electric field that we can measure to overcome the magnetic force. All right, so the last, last takeaway for you is what if in the alternate universe, instead of choosing the N-type semiconductor, I choose the P-type. What will be different? All right, so in this alternate universe, <laughs> I didn't choose the N-type, I chose the P-type. What would change? Will any of this change? Well, the equation definitely will not change. Nothing will change. The only thing that changed is this phrase, electron. The electron will now become holes or positive charge. The electron here will become holes or positive charge. And then if that is the case, right, then what will happen on your slice? Let's say I have a slice here. I'm just going to draw it here for comparison, but a bit smaller. Okay, so if you, let's say you have a p-type semiconductor, the majority charge carriers are holes. Okay, so I'm just going to draw a hole here to represent positive charge carrier. But the direction of current flow is still the same. So you're still going to have I flowing in this direction. Meaning this one, the drift velocity will still be in this direction because these are positively charged particles. So where would your magnetic force be? Your magnetic force will still be in the same direction. Nothing has changed. The only thing that has changed is instead of having positive charge on this side, instead of having, sorry, instead of having negative charge on this side, which was the initial case, we will now have positive charge. So if that is what you were thinking, that the polarity will flip, okay? The polarity will flip because the magnetic force didn't change direction, okay? So the magnetic force will still drag all the positive charge here. The difference between P-type and N-type is for N-type, electron is the majority, majority get dragged to this phase. P-type, whole or positive charge, whole is majority, so positive charge get dragged to this side. So if positive charge is dragged to this side, then the opposite side here will be negative charge. Negative, negative, negative. And what happens to the polarity of your Hall voltage? So, so this one is negative, negative, negative. And you think about the polarity of your Hall voltage. 
the hall voltage will change polarity. Okay, change polarity. So if they ask you what happens to the hall voltage reading, magnitude stay the same, but positive become negative, huh? negative become positive. Because if you compare these two, the polarity has flipped. Inside was negative, now inside is positive. So VH will change polarity. In this case, here is negative, here is positive. If let's say I install a multimeter or a voltmeter here, so I install it this way. In this case, here would be positive and here would be negative. Okay, so the polarity will swap. That's the only change. Okay, so this whole probe, right, that we will use to measure magnetic field, as long as we allow the magnetic field to enter at an angle that is 90 degree preferably, then we will be able to get this proportionality relationship. Okay, this, propor this proportionality relationship. All right, moving on. So there's more of the Hall probe in the next chapter, electromagnetic induction. But the whole idea is that whenever you pass a Hall probe in between the poles of the magnet, so although it's not labeled, let's say this is not, this is south. Lah. Okay, so the direction of magnetic field or the direction of magnetic flux density will be in this direction. So this is your B. So we pass the whole probe from X to Y. The whole probe where this up here is connected to a sensitive voltmeter, maybe a multi-voltmeter, milli or multi-voltmeter. This voltmeter will read the Hall voltage, which is EMF. So this is the EMF produced by the Hall probe when it is inside the magnetic field. Okay, the angle between the plane and the of the probe and the direction of the magnetic field is not varied, meaning we'll keep the same angle. So what will happen is when it's outside the magnetic field, we've got no reading, no reading, no reading, no reading, no reading. Inside the magnetic field, few reading, 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 reading. Of course, this is idealized. Lah. You're assuming that once you pass the threshold, there's no magnetic field. Okay, so this is the direction, this is the probe reading that you will get your Hall voltage or your induced or the EMF produce. Okay, so once again, just a reminder for VH to be measurable or best practices or to be maximum. Okay, what are our options? First, large current. Second, thin slice. Third, less charge carriers, preferably a semiconductor. Okay, and fourth, which I didn't mention just now, you will rotate the probe. Miss, why have to rotate the probe? Ah? Because if you look at our initial drawing, this magnetic field enter at 90 degree. If it's not 90 degree, how? Then your equation here will be BQV sine theta. Hiya! If we have a sine theta here, this value becomes smaller. So the VH will become smaller. And we do not like small VH, large percentage uncertainty. So what we will do is that we will rotate the probe until the, repeat the probe at the same place or at the same position. same spot until your VH reading or your voltmeter reading is maximum. This shows that your theta is 90 degree. Okay, so that's how you use a whole probe. Okay, uh, there's more to be discussed about the whole probe. We'll probably record a paper 5 discussion about this, but these are all group practices to keep in mind. And if you're asking me how I came up with all this, as mentioned just now, Use the equation. I think of the equation. Okay, BI over net. So today we've learned a lot in this video. How a whole, what is the whole effect? How it, why it goes to one side? Hint, Fleming's left hand rule, magnetic force.
What happens when it goes to one side? You set up electric field, set up whole voltage. What happens if more and more charge carrier go to one side? Electric force will become stronger and stronger until there is no more going to one side. They cancel out. This constant voltage is called Hall voltage. And this happens pretty quickly. Like, so you have to wait two hours for the reading to be maximum. Okay. And when they cancel out, when the electric force and magnetic force cancel out, we can derive a relationship or equation to find VH. And based on this relationship, we can use it in the lab to measure the magnetic flux density B. Okay, so that's all. Don't forget to think about the Hall effect and how to write the explanation. As usual, if you find all these videos helpful to your studies, please share it with your friends so that we can all learn physics together. Like and subscribe. I will see you in the next one. Take care now.